So in a company news, we've got here, Andre 3000 releases a statement on Kanye's leaked Drake this Life of the Party. So if this wasn't enough, off the back of this album coming out and maybe receiving mixed reviews, it looked like Kanye or no, it looked like Drake wanted to maybe throw the cats amongst the pigeons and introduce another element into this beef. Maybe because some people are hypothesizing that Drake has a very um, cutthroat, personal, rude, maybe overstepping a mark, diss track coming for Kanye. And he didn't want anyone to start saying he's a bully or that he's going over the top. So he wanted to make sure people knew what he was reacting to because the, the, the understanding was that there was going to be a track on the Donda album that was going to speak directly to Drake, right? That was going to be a little bit more, you know, personal and angry and maybe detail some of the reason why he's got such a big uh, problem with him and bloody blah, blah, blah. That never ended up coming out, right? Maybe because, you know, somebody's got into Kanye's ear, maybe because they changed their mind, I don't know. But something definitely has changed there because we also heard a snippet of an intro that was meant to go on the beginning of some sort of Drake track that never ended up coming out either where Kanye is basically talking about how, you know, Drake is very popular and he fucks all Kim's friends and shit, right? So there's stuff has happened and been omitted last minute that I think has been moved around, right? So um, Kanye, I guess, is, is going to bring out something or maybe Drake is responding, but regardless of the thing, Drake got his over your radio and basically released this track called Life of the Party, which I think, again, might be one of the best tracks if it ever did come out on Donda. It features Andre 3000. It's meant to be a tribute, obviously, um, to Donda and Kanye's mum. Andre, for her, has to get on it too and basically raps an incredible verse about um, his relationship with his mother and how his her passing affected the family and it's just a very personal and amazing floating of a it's just an amazing verse from somebody who again who we don't necessarily have the ability to get more music out of because they've decided to move on to other things and it's incredibly frustrating that usually the greats the people that you know are just otherworldly with this shit right who just are gifted and born with the ability to rhyme and to create these flipping you know visuals in your mind with their words are the ones that are also the most conflicted about whether or not they should go ahead and do it as a job and as a career it's just it's a so infuriating he's just so fucking good on Jeffrey Fowler legitimately like he might be in my top five of rappers and MCs it's just insane how good that verse is it's just our other world I've replayed it so many times but anyway this article from TMZ sorry from Pitchfork says the following Andre Fowler Andre has released a statement about his participation in Life of the Party, an unreleased Kanye West track, and supposed Donda outtake that Drake shared during a uh, September 3rd Sirius XFM broadcast. In the statement, the rapper claims that his contribution didn't make the album due to West's current stance against profanity. It says the following A few weeks ago, Kanye reached out about being part of the Donda album. I was inspired by his idea to make a musical tribute to his mum. It felt appropriate to me to support the Donda content by referencing my own mother who passed away in 2013. We both shared a loss, and I thought this was a beautiful choice um, to make a clean album about. Unfortunately, I didn't know that that was a plan before I wrote and recorded my verse. It was clear to me that the uh, edited clean format of the verse would not work without having the raw unoriginal also available so sadly i had to be omitted from the original album release which is fair um fair but you know i think you could make some omissions with andre get him to rewrite that verse man it's too good i write i, I track um sorry i uh, the track i received and wrote to didn't have the disc verse on it or oh, let's pause this with um what's his face because these autoplay videos are always annoying um it says, yeah, so the track I received and wrote to didn't have the disc verse on it and we were hoping to make a more focused offering of the Donda album, but I guess things happen like they are supposed to. It's unfortunate that it was released in the way and two artists that I love are going back and forth. I wanted to be on Certified Loverboy too. I just want to work with people that inspire me. Hopefully I can work with Kendrick on his album. I love to work with Lil Baby. <laughs> I respect them all. Man, he's just the most respectful guy in the world, isn't it? Don't, can't, don't you love Andre if I was just letting it be known that, look, I'm not picking sides in this shit. I don't want to get involved. I love everybody. You'll make amazing music and we would just kiss and make up and play the flute he's just a top dude in it unfortunately that isn't going to happen because kanye's bars and that track are just yeah 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 we just have to kind of you know say that that's kind of that thing is over in it um so i think what is it um yeah one of the things that you see that's really interesting about this kanye and drake beef right is that Drake seems to be the only person to really get under Kanye's skin. I've never seen anybody press Kanye's buttons as much as Drake without even saying too much. I'm sure stuff happens behind the scenes that we're not aware of. I'm really sure that happens. But from what we see in front of camera or on records and stuff, 
Drake really touches these buttons by just being, just existing, right? Just doing his thing, moving around the town and, you know, being the hip hop jock that Kanye says he is, seems to really get under his skin to the point where he just can't, you know, he just can't get this guy out of his head and it's really hilarious. So one of the things that kind of um, stood out to me was obviously this line here. That the things you, It's always interesting to see the things that annoy Kanye. I think that should be a, a blog or an Instagram. Things that annoy Kanye because he's got some very specific things that piss him off in it. Like the, no fade outs right on the end of songs right that's why these songs just end the way they end there's, there's no fading out shit there's little things that pee him off so look at look at the thing that pees him off sci high um again a very prominent writer somebody who's been a ghostwriter they say for a lot of our favorite rappers out there and somebody who's pen game a lot of people respect it says here on the lyric sci high told me to his face that sicker mode obviously the seminal track with uh travis and drake sci high told me that sicker mode was his biggest song um well go and well go and cause the what sorry well, go on, cause Dunder was the best ghostwriter I ever had, right? So I said, do, um, do, so Saha so told him to face Sycamore was his biggest song, which obviously was an offense to Kanye because he felt like, you know, I'm your biggest song. I'm your biggest artist, me, Kanye West. How can you tell me Drake's your biggest artist and I don't, I don't fuck with this guy? So that's one thing that obviously got in his neck. Then he obviously he talks into this, this interesting part of the beef that has to do with Drake and Virgil Abloh, which every, a lot of people are hypothesizing about online. I don't really know what the truth is. It still feels like to me, as I mentioned on um, Who is Celebrity Who is Celebrity Vice, I think the other day I mentioned it. It's, it still feels like to me that Kanye and Virgil Abloh's relationship, Virgil Abloh obviously being the founder of Off-White and now the artistic, di or the artistic um, director of men's of Louis Vuitton or whatever, right? Um, it feels like to me that their relationship has never really recovered ever since Virgil got the job at Louis Vuitton. Obviously, that seminal moment of Virgil doing his show at LV, the first one, and you know um, him crying on the runway together with Kanye hugging on there was really powerful. You know, you knew what that moment meant to both these guys, and you know what they've been through. He obviously knew the whispers behind the scene that Kanye obviously wasn't happy about Virgil being offered the job, the fact that he wanted that job for so long in his career, or just any kind of fashion job in that respect, and obviously being you know known as a Louis Vuitton donor for Virgil to end up going getting it was something that was a bit of pill to swallow. A little bit of jealousy, a little bit of envy. You know, it just it just get weird. I understand why that could get weird. It's like you you and your friend go to go trials for a football team. He didn't even want to go, and he ends up getting in, and you don't. It's gonna be it's gonna hit you hard a little bit. But it felt like to me, even though they kind of publicly sort of recovered their relationship after that, it didn't ever feel like it was ever gonna go back because you know, Virgil is his own guy now. He's a made guy. He's got this great career. He's branching out into many different things. He's got many different projects. Um, he's held a higher regard at both companies that didn't that kind of overlooked Kanye in terms of Louis Vuitton and Nike. Um, so it just would make for an awkward friendship at this point in their lives. That's just what it is, isn't it? Unfortunately, um, I guess especially in the creative space, it's just one of those things. So with that, it did seem strange at the time when Virgil then started to kind of buddy buddy up with Drake. Now, in one sense, you could say it's Drake. Cool. You understand it. Um, you know just is what it is but on the other side if you're Kanye's friend and you know that he definitely hates this guy it's difficult to then justify as Kanye says in this lyric I put Virgil and Drake on the same text and it wasn't about the, ma the matching arterics or kid cuddy dress I just told these grown men stop it with the funny shit I might hire the whole a team from ACG right so clearly Kanye had a problem with seeing um, Virgil and uh, Drake gallivanting around in their light wash jeans and the matching Arterix jackets that they wore as they were parading around town, right? That kind of inf that kind of a uh, um, momentous time when they were just gallivanting. I forgot what show they were going to. It was Paris. I don't know what it was. Um, so quite clearly he has an issue with that and the fact that now, you know, Virgil or, you know, or yeah, Virgil basically has kind of segued his way into, you know, working with um, Kid Cudi on a capsule collection I think that was maybe being presented with Off-White you know, that was led to the dress obviously that he wore on Saturday Night Live I get it I completely do get it but I just don't know where that puts Virgil in this position like what's he meant to do is he not meant to talk to Drake because Kanye hates him don't any of you guys have friends that you know or friends of friends that don't like each other you don't pick sides you just have to you know hope they get over it do you know what I mean but it's hard to unless you're your best friends but you don't just go and pick sides and say i'm not gonna fuck with you because he doesn't fuck with you sometimes your friends are just fall out in the midst of you all being friends then what do you know what i mean because they were cool before kanye and drake and then they obviously fell out so 
you know, if Kanye, sorry, if Virgil then developed a friendship with Drake away from Kanye, what's he meant to do? Not talk to the guy anymore. And if, and unfortunately, Drake's famous, isn't he? He's one of the biggest stars in the world, if not one of the biggest stars in the world, the biggest. So every time they do go out and kind of hang out, even if they aren't wearing matching Arterix jackets, they're still going to get papped. They're still going to get snapped. It might look away, but, you know, it's just the nature of the game. Right? Like, But it's just, again, funny the stuff that you hear from Kanye that absolutely annoys him. And then of course, there's another line here going at Drake, where he says, "Um, thought he was thought we was in Abu Dhabi. Told Drake don't play with me on GD. It's like, is Kanye now a member of the Gangsters Disciples, or is this just him trying to act hard? And he sent that message to everybody. So I guess Drake basically forwarded on that message. <laughs> what are you trying to claim that Drake is a snitch? Drake is six nine. So I said, so if I hit you with a WID, you better hit me with yes, sir. I'm writing everything you need." which might be entirely into the original part of the beef where allegedly Drake went and writ some bars for, I don't know what album that was, maybe it was Ye or something. So that might be tying into it, but I don't really know. Either way, um, I think as fans, it's a good thing that these guys are beefing because it means we're going to get far better music from these two guys because they're in some sort of conflict. It's just it's the nature of the beast. You go through grief, you go through heartbreak, you're going to definitely bring out some of your best work. So it's no surprise that Certified Lover Boy and Donda was so strong. Despite their flaws, there were very strong projects to come out, especially Kanye. The improvement from um, um, the Ye project, is it the last one, the Ye project? Whatever that came before that, to Donda is just stark, like night and day, from the way he rolled it out to the merch, to the lyrics, to the features, to the mixing. It's just another level, right? It's just, you can tell he's in his bag. And I think there's an interview recently featured um, on some German channel where he speaks as this kid and basically, basically something on the lines of like, oh, um, yeah, let me try to find it actually. I'm here to create music. This is what my divine calling is. I'm here to do music. Music is my thing. Um, and you can definitely tell he's definitely in his pocket for music. He's definitely decided, okay, cool. Let's double down with the music thing. The fashion thing is doing its thing. I can get back on there later, but for now i need to hone in on the music and get back to where it's going and i'm i'm a fan i'm not gonna lie man i didn't think he was able to do it. i didn't think he was able to recover and get that bug again in terms of music but bloody hell he can um, let me see if i can find it. it's a little interview that he does with like a german tv station <clears throat> um and he gave this guy a real big look actually in terms of doing it let's see uh yeah, this is the one. Um, unfortunately, interview. So, yeah, it says the interview here is available in English. Let's scroll down. Let's get up on the thing. Let's pause this because you, you know it's in German anyway. So, I think this part of the interview here, if I scroll down here, it says different architecture. Duh, duh, duh. Choose Berlin. Um, where is it? It says something around here. He says, yeah, do you have a specific date for new music or is it just inspirational music? He says, the reason why God put me in here is to make music. God put Demna here to design. God put me here to make music. God put Taido um, Ando here to create architecture. You know, God put James Terrell here. God put Matthew Barney here. God put us all here for a reason. And the reason is to be a conductor and to produce a lot of music. So, if, so I mean, I produce music in my mind no matter where. So he's out here to produce tunes. Here's what he's doing. And I think this is why we're getting the best version of Kanye because he's focused on just making music. And again, he's got his adversary in his head. He's this. He's got this mask on. He's this super villain. He's got this different kind of persona that he's rocking when he's on stage. There's no surprise that the music sounds so good, man. Really is no surprise. But yeah, um, Certified Lover Boy, you know, is what it is. That leak track from Drake was, or the leak track from Kanye was sensational. I can't wait to hear what the Drake's reply is to that. That's going to be pretty decent too going forward. And all in all, man, for the fans, we're the ones eating, innit? We are the ones eating. <laughs>